Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Olympus E500. In North America it was known as the Evolt E500. It was introduced in 2005. It's a four-thirds camera, not micro four-thirds. It has a mirror and a longer flange focal distance, the distance from the lens mount to the sensor plane. It's uh, 38.67 millimeters versus 19.25 for micro four thirds. It uses an eight megapixel Kodak uh, CCD sensor, records in JPEG, TIFF, RAW, RAW plus JPEG, uh, and it records to either a compact flash card or an XD card. Not an SD, an XD, like a lot of the older Olympus cameras. It doesn't have a movie mode at all, so that kind of shows its age. Um, because it's a DSLR, it has an optical viewfinder. Uh, it's 95% field of view and uh, 0.9x magnification. There's really good info along the right side of the viewfinder. Um, I'll bring up a grab from the manual here. You can select for left, center, or right autofocus point. It shows your F number. Uh, it obviously can't display that with an adapted lens. It shows the shutter speed, autofocus, confirmation, flash ready, and if the light's solid, it's ready to go. If it's flashing, it means it's still charging. A white balance, it doesn't specify, it just shows you that you're set to anything but auto. The auto exposure lock or auto focus lock, depending on how you have it set, is engaged. And the auto exposure is a press and hold, but in the settings you can turn that into a toggle where you hit it once and it's on, and you hit it again and it's off. It shows the exposure compensation, shows you the value, plus or minus uh, five stops, and you can select half or a third or a whole stop in the settings. And then it shows you the metering mode, what Olympus calls ESP, center weighted, spot, spot with highlight control, and spot with shadow control, and then your battery status and what mode you're in. The viewfinder has a built-in diopter. That's nice since I my eyes are getting old and I have specs now. It's a little bit small, but you have to remember that a micro four thirds, not micro four thirds, a four thirds sensor is only a quarter of the area of a full frame. So you'd expect it to be a little bit small. It has a two and a half inch fixed LCD. Uh, it's not bad, 215K pixels. Uh, you know, it's plenty bright, and it does not have live view because they didn't do video. Um, but it's kind of nice because uh, you can toggle a um, little bit of information, a lot of information, or no information. And then once you take an image, it will show you a preview image. To toggle through your values, it's nice to have the info display up, and then you press OK, and then you can use the four-way selector to pick what you want to pick. And then you press OK again and use the wheel up here to move through the values. So it's a really, really nice, simple menu system. I wish more modern cameras were this well laid out. The shutter on this is uh, has a max speed of 1 4,000th. Pretty nice for a camera this old to eight seconds and when you're in manual and you set it to bulb it'll go up to eight minutes so that's pretty nice if you're doing star trails or something uh, the exposure modes it's got full auto programmed auto exposure uh, aperture priority shutter priority manual and then a whole bunch of scene modes it's got a few of the scene modes here and then if you set it to scene you can dive into the menus and get even more of them. I won't get too deep into that. The metering, they have what they call digital ESP, which is the Olympus uh, version of matrix metering. Uh, 
does 49 areas of the seam and then center weighted spot which is 2% of the uh, what's available uh, what you can see in the viewfinder and uh, it'll meter from uh, EV1 which is really really dark to EV20 which is crazy crazy bright the ISO on this guy goes from 100 to 1600 but to get above 400 you have to go into the menu and select ISO boost and that allows you to get anything from 400 to 1600 I can't really speak to the autofocus on this guy I got two lenses with it and they're both broken uh, the autofocus is biffed on this 14 to 45 here's a sample image of what it's like and then the bayonet is broken on this 40 to 150 the whole camera seems to have been dropped because the battery door is also missing got this nice little kludge on here it's got a clip on the battery but it just holds a little bit better with a piece of taped up cardboard so I used an OM to four thirds adapter and this really nice uh, Zuiko 50 f1.8 you have to shoot in stop down mode so open it up and get your focus and then stop down because of the crop factor of uh, four thirds um, this is the equivalent to a hundred millimeter lens but combined with the uh, pretty close focusing distance of this lens, uh, 100 meter, millimeter, it was decent because I was mostly shooting color out in the yard. Had another camera ahead of the line, but then before everything went into fall mode and we lost all the color, wanted to shoot with this guy. The only real weakness that I've found is the auto white balance. Uh, if there's not a nice solid white in the scene, a lot of times it'll biff the auto white balance. A lot of modern cameras do that, but that's the only real thing that I really had to tweak. But it's super simple to mess with it. You got one button, the up arrow, uh, or the top button on the four-way controller, and then you're in the white balance, and you can select uh, sunny, cloudy, indoors, bunch of different settings you can customize the uh, the Kelvin rating so it's really really flexible really all I had to do was uh, go from auto into sunlight uh, in the conditions I was shooting in flash has a decent built-in flash it's guide number 13 meters at ISO 100 and you can adjust the power from full to a quarter to a sixteenth to a sixty fourth so that is really nice and flexible there. It also has this E-System hot shoe um, that'll take uh, Olympus smart flashes that'll talk to the body, but you can also use an ancient flash that just uses the center of contact. That works just fine. So for being 17 years old, um, this is a really full-featured camera with tons of customization. I mean, the manual is 216 pages long, um, but it doesn't get in the way. It's not complex, and you can't find stuff like Sony menus. Um, for a, a real deep dive into this guy, uh, there's a great article over on dpreview.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. And I'm going to process some black and white and get that camera up, and I will see you then.